Welcome back to GB Guns Armory, the series in which we're going back over some guns that have been already reviewed out for a while. Looking to make this sort of the Reddit thread where you comment on your thoughts, experiences, feelings, etc. And I'm giving my thoughts, feels. Because the main reviews on the main channel are fact and performance based, this gives a chance for a little bit more of the uh, talks and feels. So today we've got the old school TP9 DA from Canik. DA as in double action, one of the things that made this unique, this is the Walther P99 clone, is we've got our regular, let's see if I get some light on there, single action anti-stress mode. See it stopped with that click there. Crisp break, right? And short reset. Everything people loved about the P99. We also have a long heavy double action. And on top of the slide is this black button here. You can see where the striker is located. A little striker indicator. If I push that button, striker gone, and the trigger is now in double action mode. Pretty cool concept. Walther and the P99 are famous among those who know it and love it, and then everyone else had not heard of it. When that patent had expired, Canic swooped on it, and this was sort of the first striker fired Canic that ever made headlines in the US. It was available for under half the price that Walther charged for a P99. It was a new company people hadn't heard of, um, and so lots of folks jumped on it. It was sort of the beginning, at least in my knowledge and memory, it was the beginning of, wow, affordable guns from Turkey. Uh, all came down to this TP9 DA. It got really popular because it was very affordable. Um, it also, I think, was a first gun for a lot of people. And as a result, started to have a mixed reputation. Because there are a couple, I guess you say faults or tricks, things that just require a little more knowledge uh, to run one of these than your standard basic Glock 19, if you will. For one, the 30 trigger modes. The intent um, for Walther's design was to allow someone to choose to have a double action first shot, uh, followed by that super short re crisp reset uh, for any follow-up shots. So you had a gun that was effectively safer for carry, safer for the do I shoot, do I shoot, do I shoot, and uh, no. Uh, changing mind scenarios of like people running in panic in crowds and things like that, especially for law enforcement that have to deal with that. That's what Walther's gun was designed around. The other concept behind it was by decocking it, you didn't need to pull the trigger to disassemble it. Um, so at the time, there were reports going on of Glock, which you know, was and has been and probably will be a uh, dominant law enforcement gun because they're super cheap to law enforcement and very simple guns to work on. Um, folks pulling the trigger to disassemble and having a negligent discharge because they didn't clear the weapon first. So some agencies, rather than wanting to spend the time and money to train their people better, wanted a gun that could decock. And that makes sense. I know it's uh, very easy for us to say, that's dumb law enforcement chiefs just train your people. However, training requires time and money, and that's also time when those officers are not out enforcing law. So oftentimes, chiefs of police and militaries <laughs> will opt for uh, the simpler, simpler solution to idiot-proof their stuff versus train their people how to use stuff better. Um, this is why I, as a 15-year veteran of active army who went to two wars, am not, uh, I don't really fall in love with stuff that's mil-spec or stuff that's chosen by the military because it's not always the best. There are many other factors in that, but I digress. Back to this gun. So that button on top is a neat way to be able to decock. It's great for training. Uh, I carried a Walther P99 for that reason as one of my earlier carry guns because I wanted that double action first pull. I liked that extra level of safety, that extra delay in a shot unless you really want a shot. So with this decocked, it's not hard to make a quick shot. Like 
<laughs> if you're deliberate, you'll get it anyways. So the faults with this thing, the struggle and the lore that kind of started to damage Kanek's reputation uh, were twofold. One is there were jokes on the internet about someone could push this button in a fight and disable your gun. Uh, I find that really hard to believe. There were some entertaining videos, this is like 2015, 2016, on the internet of people trying to karate chop or shove a stick on it or push the button before someone could shoot. It doesn't disable the gun. There was briefly a model that that happened on, but not on the TP9DA. The other one, the major one that I think caused a lot of problems, and I still see lore related to it today, is that this gun was not developed for the US market. It was developed as an international military law enforcement gun based on 124 NATO ammo, which has 10% higher pressure than American 115 grain ball SAMI spec ammo. That meant a heavier spring. This has, it is a heavy, heavy, strong recoil spring in this thing. Um, that means that if you are using really weak ammo, and remember uh, over at gbgunsdepot.com, we have the nine millimeter range ammunition guide. There's more than a 30% variance in muzzle energy from common 115 grain ammo. So it's possible to get rather warm, rather hot 115 grain that's gonna perform just fine. It's also possible to get really, really soft nine mil that may or may not run, especially if you don't have perfect form in your shooting. Circling back to this being a budget gun, that means a lot of first timers buying it, a lot of newer shooters buying it, who may not have their wrist and grip figured out. As a result, a little bit of limp wristing as it's called, your wrist is absorbing some of the energy that the gun needs to cycle the slide. If your wrist absorbs a little bit, you end up short stroking, you end up with stove, stove pipes, or failure to feed, things like that. So, People said it was unreliable, then folks said, oh, it's fine with plus P or 124 NATO, and that became sort of the thing, and yes, hotter ammo is a way to compensate for poor shooting form, however, I myself have done videos with this gun and other canics running fine on soft, soft ammo when you've got proper form with your hands. Fast forward, and I think it was around 2017, Canik changed the recoil springs for the US market. There was now enough demand in the US, enough people buying Canix that it was worth it to them to have a separate SKU, completely separate thing shipped to the US to keep Americans happy with our soft ammo and our novice shooters. That's seven years ago, <laughs> okay? So most any Canic produced in the last seven years does fine on American ammunition. Um, it really comes down more to the shooter and your wrist and your grip and all of that kind of thing. Um, which is kind of frustrating. I really feel for them because they were good guns, but they were facing a negative reputation simply out of ignorance. Not faulting gun owners. I, I've been there too. You buy the gun, you buy a box of ammo that has the same caliber on it, everything should, be, should work, right? Well, as you viewers know, we've proven time and time again, that's not always true. And it's neither the gun's fault nor the ammo's fault, it's the combination thereof. Plus, variable three is the shooter themselves. So, um, I think TP9DAs are still around every once in a while. It's, by modern standards, a little too simple. It doesn't, uh, doesn't take a red dot. I have to use my eyes to shoot. Um, but otherwise, a good gun. Same magazines as uh, all the current Canics. Uh, at least they're interchangeable. Um, which is part of how I joyfully have so many Canic mags. It's, I've been shooting Canics for a long time. Pretty neat piece. Uh, now that Walther has declared their final edition of the P99, that they're not going to make any more of them, um, this may be your option if you can't get your hand on one of those P99s and you want that double action, single action, decockable, anti stress trigger second strike capability in a striker fired gun. It's not a very common feature, but I think it's pretty cool. And it's one of the reasons why the TP9DA is part of the GB Guns Armory. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.